Hi, my name is Mark Latender. I've been a systems consultant for the RISC VTA LMS for over 10 years, and today I'd like to go over the feedback measure feature that is available with VTA 8.0 test feedback, including setting up test feedback measure items, creating test feedback measure sets, associating a feedback measure set to a test template, and what it looks like in action. This video will show how quickly you can implement this VTA 8.0 feature. A feedback measure set is really just a collection of feedback measure items, and those items you can consider your potential answers. What are the choices that you're going to give somebody to select from when they're giving you feedback online? So you put in all of your potential answers, and then you create a feedback measure set where you select for this particular measure set, I want to use these specific potential answers. Once your feedback measure set is done, you're then able to associate it to a VTA test template for use online. When you associate a measure set to a VTA test template, you'll be able to use it in two different ways. You can set the measure set to be used during question feedback, which is collected while the student is taking the online test, or during review feedback, which is collected while the student is reviewing their graded online test. Or you could use it in both locations. And you could use one feedback measure set to be used during question feedback and use a different measure set for review feedback. You can create a feedback measure set in any site. However, the feedback measure items are controlled in the master site only. So I am not here in the master site. If I look at the feedback measure items grid, I'm not going to be able to add anything. I am going to have to switch my site over to the master site. And then you'll see that you have the ability to add items. As to what your items should be, that is really going to be up to your organization. Here, I've just created a little list of things that might be going wrong with a question that you need to know about. So you need to give students the opportunity to select these and let you know what might be happening with your questions. So such things as the answers are not clear, the correct answer is not really the correct answer, the image is distorted, any one of these could be used. And you may have others that make more sense in your organization. Using this list, in the master site, in the feedback measures grid, I'm going to go ahead and click add. So to make this faster, I am going to copy from my little notepad and I'm just going to paste it in here. These values, these items, all of your potential answers, they can be up to 128 characters. And you can see here that there's an active status, and that is in the future, if you've used this answer and you no longer want to use it, you can deactivate it. Once I save this record, I'll be able to see the date that it was originally added. If I happen to inactivate it in the future, I will know when that last inactivation date is. And if I decide to start using it again and come in and reactivate it, this value here for last reactivation date will appear. So I'm going to just quickly get in this list. And rather than have you watch all of this, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you'll see my first three are here. And now I'll just quickly add them in while you're not looking. Now we have all of my feedback measure items, all of my potential answers are now in the system and available for use. And they can be used again at any site. It's just that the master list of the feedback measure items are going to be controlled only in your master site. When considering additional feedback measure items that we're not seeing here, consider that they could be used during the test or during the review. So be sure that the response is going to make sense if it's used during the test, during the review, or both. And also keep responses simple. You don't want to have to explain what something is or means. Maybe you're using language that the student is never going to understand. And it's something that you might consider common language in your department, but people out there in the field are not going to understand. They're going to say, what are they trying to get at here? What does that mean? Another thing to consider here is once any one of these answers is associated to a set and has been used on an online test, you can no longer delete that item. So while I haven't been able to associate it anywhere, this item here is going to let me delete it. If it had appeared on an online test, it won't, but I can still go in and inactivate it so it's no longer used. With all of our items in, 
we can now go ahead and make a measure set. I am going to switch over to the feedback measure sets grid and I'm going to head back into my parent site and I'm going to make a feedback measure set in another site using the master sites list of potential answers, the items. I'm going to add a record, create a new set, give it a name, So you can see you get to enter in a measure name, but the student is only going to see the displayed text. And what this displayed text is, you can consider it your question. If the items were your potential answers, your measure set, you can consider as a question. So which of the following apply to this question? Now we're going to navigate over to the items tab. And we're going to give the student all the choices that we want to from the list of available items. You can order them in a certain way so that if you want to put what you think might be the most common to be first and second, Just keep on adding the items until you think that your list is complete. The student will see which of the following apply to this question and the options that they'll have to select from is whatever you associate to your measure set. With my measure set now created, I can go ahead and add this measure set to any new or existing test template. I'm going to go ahead into a test that I've been using for years. I'm now deciding to turn test feedback on for this particular test. In a previous video, I did talk about confidence measure and confidence reminders, so I'm going to skip those for now. And here I'm going to turn on for question feedback. This is while they're taking the question during the test. I'm also going to turn it on during the review. So you can imagine that somebody might not find all those issues with the question when they think that they know it. And then when they find out during the review that they got it wrong, all of a sudden they might discover a lot of things that are incorrect about that question. Now let's look what test feedback looks like in action. This course that I've found is using that test template and that test template has got the test feedback feature turned on. Now when I start my test, I'm going to be told in the instructions that it does allow for submitting feedback. I also have an icon in the top right corner that helps the student see just visually that they are allowed to enter feedback. So now VTA is going to go and take the questions and I've got my feedback area here. If I expand, I can select as many as I want. During my review, I could also submit feedback. In my next blog, I will be going over what does the reporting look like for test feedback measure sets. So I hope you found this helpful and enjoy the new VTA assessment feature. Thanks for watching.